Hey guys, today I'm going to be starting a brand new project and my challenge is, is to see if I can build an RC car that can do more than 150 miles an hour but on a budget. So currently the most popular formula for building a speed car is taking something like an Armour Limitless and then putting an enormous amount of power in it. And although these cars are very, very successful, they are very expensive with some cars costing in excess of like two or three grand. So in this video, I want to make a start on a design which should hopefully have the same performance abilities, but be at a fraction of the cost and also on a smaller scale. So without further ado, let's begin. So here is my idea that I propose. So we're going to be taking a one-tenth scale car instead of a one-eighth or one-seventh. So this is an FTX Banzai, which we are going to heavily modify to make it suited for its purposes. So we've obviously, for the time being, got a custom chassis, but we'll kind of put the car aside for now and have a look at what's going to be powering it. So my idea is to go for two power systems. A lot of the current speed cars are running two power systems because it's much more efficient. So if I can keep this car as efficient as possible and as light as possible, it will be as fast as possible so we've got two hobbling motors two hobbling ESCs two 4S LiPos hollow opinion gears and also a GPS and all of that should hopefully fit on this chassis here so mathematically with this setup here we should have about the same power to weight ratio as some of the fastest RC cars so if all goes together well I've got high hopes for this project so apart from size the biggest difference between my idea and the most common way of building a speed car is the way that we're going to take the power and drive the wheels so let me quickly explain so you can run a conventional motor mount system where you just have a motor which has a pinion on it and that drives the spool which then drives the front and rear diffs. You could also run direct drive which is what I'm doing in my long jump armour type and so one motor drives the front diff and then one motor drives the rear diff. The only disadvantage with that is that it's a lot of load going on the electrics but the main problem is that you can't change the gearing ratios, it's kind of got a fixed gear and that's it, you can only just slightly change the ratios by changing the diffs. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do on this speed car is kind of merge those two ideas together. As far as I'm concerned, no one else has tried this. So let's see if it's going to work. So my idea is that we've got a pinion directly on the diff output drive and then we've got a motor with a pinion on it and then that pinion can drive this pinion which directly drives this front diff. So we've kind of got that direct drive sort of inspiration which I know from personal experience is crazy, crazy fast. But then we've also got the ability to change these gears here. And then we have another motor just like that at the back here to drive this back diff here. So we've got a twin motor direct drive configuration but we can also change the gears. Like I said, I don't think anyone's ever done this or tried this before, so it's going to be a bit of a stab in the dark, but hopefully it should be pretty successful. So this is the layout that I'm thinking, guys. As you can see, it's a very snug fit. Everything just about fits on the chassis. And as you can see, I've also tried to get perfect weight distribution uh, on the left and the right of the car. Didn't want too much weight on one side of the car. As for the receiver, guys, that's just small. So that will either go maybe on top of the servo or maybe on this front splitter at the front here. So as for the car and chassis here, like I said, it's an FTX Banzai and we've made a hardboard chassis. So currently, this is just made of wood, which obviously isn't very suitable for speed runs, but it's very easy to work with and I've got loads of it uh, lying around with me so for the time being this is what we're going to use to model prototypes for the car and then after that we're probably going to use some carbon fiber or something a lot more durable. So as for the body shell guys I've gone ahead and designed my own custom body shell especially for this car and it's currently being made it should be ready for me in the next couple of days so we'll be able to fit it before the end of this video so in this video I just want to focus on kind of getting the car into a rolling state and then in the next video we're going to be doing setup obviously we we can't just chuck all the stuff together and then give the car its first run because it would just go catastrophically wrong. In the next video, we'll probably have a look at suspension setup, diff setup, steering setup, all of that. And then after that, we'll obviously go do some testing. Uh, but in this video, I just want to focus on getting the car roughly put together into a rolling state. So without further ado, let's get building. So I'm using FTX Banzai motor mounts, which I've cut in half uh, to make smaller. And then in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm using the rash shifting technique uh, to mark out the holes, which is putting 3M tape on the chassis, pressing the motor mount into the tape, and that leaves a mark of where the holes will go. And then after that, I'll drill the holes out and hopefully it should all line up perfectly. So there we go, guys. That's one of the motors in. So next, I'll do the other one off camera, and then we can think about sticking a few things down. So there we go, guys. Both motors are in. I was actually surprised of how well that worked. That uh, Raz Schifrin 
3M tape trick works an absolute treat. The pinions are aligned absolutely perfectly. Uh, unfortunately, I can't screw this pinion down just yet because this pinion is a 5mm shaft, uh, but the little outdrive shaft here is 3.2mm. Uh, so we'll need to buy or make an adapter. I think Kyosho make one, uh, so we might go ahead and get that ordered up. But otherwise, we'll probably have to make one. But other than that, guys, those two motors have fit absolutely perfectly in. So next, I'm going to have a look at sticking down the rest of these components onto the chassis. And for this, I'm going to be using a bit of this heavy-duty Velcro here i've had loads of success with it in the past it's worked perfectly on my jump car and any other cars i've used it on and also the advantage of using velcro is that it's very easy to move things around if i want to reposition something if i drill holes in the chassis to screw it all down it's kind of in a permanent fixing and then i have to make other holes elsewhere if i use velcro it's pretty simple i can kind of take things off when i want to and kind of move them around relatively easily <laughs> So there we go guys, that's everything now stuck down on the chassis, it all fit absolutely perfectly in there, it's all nice and secure. So next, we actually need to have a look at where these switches are going to go. I'm not going to be fitting those in this video, uh, because I still need to find what servo I'm going to be putting in the car. I still haven't gotten yet, I'm undecided of which one to go for, but my plan is, is to stick down these switches up on the server up there. I think they should reach there quite nicely. So here we go guys, it's been a couple of days and the body shell is now here, it's finished, it's fully 3D printed, it's my own design overall, I'm really really happy with how it's come out as you can see there's a little bit of a problem here uh, with the printer i think it just got quite hot obviously this is not an easy shape uh, to print out so to talk you through the design here guys i've kind of taken a little bit of inspiration from the delta plastics world record body and some of the existing kind of land speed record cars a bit like some of donald campbell's speed runners so as you can see it's fully enclosed wheels the wheels will be hidden inside the car hopefully that should keep the car nice and streamlined i've got this nice big sloping kind of front body here it's perfectly smooth at the bottom here that's just going to fit nicely on top of the splitter here so we should get minimal drag and hopefully this part here uh, should kind of give us a nice bit of downforce obviously we're going to need a little bit of downforce on this project where it's so light to just keep it on the ground but we don't want too much downforce that it's going to stop the car from wanting to drive uh, so hopefully this shape here should do a nice good job of that and then we've also got this fin on the back here just a singular fin here uh, like on donald campbell's car and the purpose of this is just to help keep the car going in a straight line not to create any extra downforce so if we pull the body in half apart we can kind of see of how i've designed it so i actually had to do it in two different pieces here so it fit on the 3d printing tray and to actually hold it together as you can see i've designed some little mounting lugs there where it'll all screw together unfortunately i won't be able to properly screw it together in this video because i haven't actually got long enough screws uh, these here just kind of hold it together roughly so we'll be able to put it on the car and see how it looks and in case you're wondering this is three millimeters thick here so it's going to be plenty strong enough but it's also not going to be too heavy and as you can see i've also left the back of the body open so if any air does get in the car from like the wheel arches then it can escape and hopefully that way it shouldn't want to backflip so in order for the body to fit the car nicely we've had to make some modifications so as you can see i've gone ahead and removed the two front shocks and cut off the majority of this front shock tower here so where it was all sitting up so high it was colliding with the front of the body so it's pushing the body way too far forward so i could slightly tweak the design of the body or i could remake the chassis but that is a lot of work either way i would have to change both uh, so instead i've actually had an idea so these two front shocks were basically futile anyway because no matter what i did to them the car was still rubbing along the ground the whole time there is a lot of weight in this car for the size of it and the shocks were just not up for the job so if we have a look at kevin talbot's new speed car over here as you can see he's actually using links as rear shocks and i've got an entire spare banzai over here well the majority of a spare banzai over here as spares for the car and if we have a look here we've got some links which potentially could be the perfect size 
to do something similar as Kev did for the front shocks on my car. So let's have a quick look here and see what we can figure out. Possibly. So there we go guys, that worked absolutely perfectly. As you can see now, we've got plenty of ground clearance and we've also actually still got a tiny bit of flex in the suspension there, absolutely perfect. And now I said I wasn't gonna do any setup in this video, all that setup is gonna be in the next video, but I wanted to get the body fitted in this video and in order to get the body fitted, we had to make this change here. So here we go guys, that's the body now sitting absolutely perfectly on the car. We've also got our nice smooth lip at the front here, just how I wanted to. And guys, this project is just coming along absolutely perfectly. I really think it's got some serious potential. So as for actually holding the body onto the car, I'm thinking of maybe going for a Velcro system. I want to try to avoid using body posts and things that are going to stick out the top of the shell to try to keep the car as aerodynamic as possible. So we'll see in the next video what we decide to use. And as well as that, we're also going to have a look at suspension setup, steering setup, and all like the toe and the caster angles. And you're really not going to want to miss that uh, because after that, we're going to be testing the car. So if you want to watch all that, make sure that you're subscribed and that you press the notification bell. But for now, that tops off for this video. I really do hope you did enjoy it make sure if you did that you leave like and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed make sure to do that and make sure to press the notification bell so you don't miss any other cool action so that's it for me i hope you have a brilliant day all weekend and hope to see you next time in the next video bye